Hi, this is Caleb Strait of the Record Argus out at Goddard State Park today. I'm here with uh, Marissa Sproles, who's a Ranger One here at the park, and she's going to explain to us a little bit about uh, why, uh, what causes leaves to change certain colors and, and why they drop. Uh, so Marissa, what, why do, where do the certain colors come from when the leaves change? Um, so we have right here, like this tulip poplar right here, you'll see these bright, beautiful yellows, and so that's caused by a chemical called a carotene. And those carotenes are actually present in the tree all year long, whenever it, the leaves are present. But that green, that chlorophyll, which is what the trees use to produce food, um, overpowers that color. As that chlorophyll goes away as the tree preps for winter, um, the, dream, the green uh, kind of fades away and those yellows come out brighter. Um, in some other trees, like our oaks and sumacs and things like that, where you're seeing those reddish colors, um, our sugar maples, maples that are red, um, those colors are caused by tannins or autocyanins, and those chemicals are actually produced during that process of getting ready for winter. So as the tree processes its last sugars, as the days get shorter and there's less and less sun, then there's a chemical reaction that causes those red colors. And so those are actually being formed at the time versus the yellows, which are there year round. Um, the other thing that most people are not aware of is why trees drop their leaves in the first place. And so the winter is very cold, right? And so water freezes. The leaves are a majority are water. And so if the trees kept their leaves on during the winter, that um, the water would freeze and then it would cause it to be heavier as the ice froze and expanded. Um, it would cause the leaves to be heavier than they are and then they would break off the, the limbs which would be detrimental to the trees. So the trees, rather than um, breaking off limbs or anything like that, drop their leaves which are their food source for the year. In addition, the winter days are much, much shorter so the trees don't get as much sunlight which is what helps them process um, those sugars into food. And so, again, it's more beneficial for the tree to just kind of go into this stasis or hibernation state for the winter um, and, and drop their leaves and then grow new ones in the spring. Um, conversely, we have our evergreens or our, the majority of our needle trees. They do lose some of their leaf, of their, of their needles, um, but it's a, it's a process. So not all of them drop off all at once, um, but they do lose some of them. The needles themselves are flatter and they have a coating on them, which prevents that water from freezing in the winter. Um, and so the needle trees then have adapted to survive the winter without uh, losing all of their needles and um, sacrificing their food source for uh, preservation of their limbs. Great. Uh, thanks, Marissa. And be sure to pick up the Record Argus for uh, stories on the foliage here at uh, Goddard and some other uh, areas around the, the county.